Hickok 45 here. You all are quite often requesting us to do more Kimbers. Let's do one. Yeah. <laughs> Is that empty? Yes. So we're going to do a Kimber. How's that? It's called a revolver though. The Kimber is the K6S, okay? I don't know how widely available the thing is yet. It Here it is, the K6S. We saw it at, when was it, John's SHOT Show, I guess, and uh, everybody was, it was all the buzz. And when we had heard that uh, Kimber was offering a revolver, we, of course, thought it was a joke. It's like the jokes that circulate occasionally about Glock coming out with a 1911 or something. And then somebody will even mock up a picture of one. Uh, so I thought that might be what it was, just a joke. And then my second thought was, once I realized, okay, they're serious, that, okay, this will be interesting. I was not expecting much, okay? Not, not to dis-Kimber, just that they've never made revolvers. And I thought, okay, I wonder what this is going to be. Got over to the booth and was fairly impressed with it. You know, just fondling it there at the booth at SHOT Show. And I think most people were. So uh, it was that kind of deal. And I guess they had one out on uh, Industry Day at the range too that Monday. But it, there it is. Uh, like I say, I am pleasantly surprised. It's, it's not a bad looking revolver. And it seems to be well made. I've had it for, I don't know, I guess two weeks now at least, and have been firing it from time to time, cleaning it, firing it, no problems, and uh, firing a variety of ammo, uh, light 38 Special, warmer 38 Special, plus P357 Magnum, and we'll fire some of that today. But uh, it's, it's a nice little revolver. Uh, what can I say? And I'm a revolver guy uh, to some extent, as you know. I like a small, quality, compact revolver and it really is one of them. That's what it really is. It seems to be. Now, if you know more about it than, than my experience, you'll share. I couldn't find a lot on the web, I guess because not many of them are out there yet. I even, uh, I think I Googled uh, like uh, K6S you know, problems or quality, all kinds of the things you Google to find where people are talking about it or trashing it or whatever they are for whatever reason. Couldn't find much. Uh, so I think it's just not out there much. But uh, everything was, uh, that I could find was a, a, an ad for it, you know, or an infomercial kind of first look video, that sort of stuff. It's, you know, the usual infomercials. Uh, but anyway, uh, there's probably more on it. I just didn't see it. But it seems like a good revolver. Okay, that's my bottom line right away. Let me shoot some regular 38 specials. Those were some plus P's I was firing. These are just some 158 grain lead. Uh, classic 38 uh, special rounds I like to shoot and let's just take a few shots now it has a really short barrel two inches long that's not very long and let's uh, let's take a bowling pin out yeah <laughs> put some on this target see where it hits I'm just kind of throwing them it uh, Shoots a little bit below point of aim, depending on the ammo you're using. As you warm up the ammo, it seems to shoot pretty much close to on, depending on the distance you're shooting. When you have a two inch barrel, it uh, changes the equation. Uh, and you maybe, I don't know if I'm correct. I think I'm correct. You probably get less consistency as you're changing ammo. You're shooting four or five different types of ammo it probably affects your point of impact a little bit more, point of aim a little more than say a four or six inch barrel, I think. So uh, I've shot already two different uh, power factors. Here's some stuff that's pretty weak. I'm gonna shoot a couple of these. This is, this. all right. Let's try, uh, let's try a little bowling. Yeah. Not bad, bowl them over. <laughs> works on two liters. Even works on coffins. I think it's empty. Yeah. Uh, nice little shooter uh, for a two inch barrel revolver. And I said, to me, it seems well made. Uh, it seems to be made in a precision sort of way. Things I like about it uh, I like the grips. I have to say, I've never felt those before, this revolver. The, 
they're the Crimson Trace Laserless Grips, is what they're called, okay? There's no laser, and I didn't realize Crimson Trace made laserless grips, grips without a laser for you folks in Kentucky, okay? Uh, my relatives especially. Uh, and they feel good. The rubber is is nice. It's uh, it's just soft enough. You really get some friction there, but it's not too soft, okay? It, it, they, they really feel good. They got the, the hump there and just the right place. So I like the grips, I'll have to say. And grips are really important on a small revolver, or a small gun of any kind. Uh, so those are nice. And uh, it's it's kind of in the size category, I guess, of like the, uh, the Colt Detective Special. And they claim it's the, what, the smallest or the lightest six-shot uh, revolver. All right, in production or something like that. And that's the thing about it, it is six shots. You can count the holes, see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It holds six. It's not too hard to make a small revolver that holds five rounds, but this, this baby holds six. And of course they flattened out the, the cylinder there, so it takes even a little less room. It makes the cylinder a little less wide, I guess at least right there, not right there, I'm not sure there's any less, but uh, it kind of flattens it out a little bit. And uh, it is smallish. You don't. You really can't get much smaller than that and hold six 38s or 357s. So that's what they set out to do. And of course, everybody knows Kimber's better known for making 1911s, right? And uh, this is their only revolver, as far as I know. And uh, it appears they put a lot of research into it and did a pretty good job. You know, I'm fond of Smith and Wessons. I like Ruger's and uh, the others too. But uh, Smith and Wesson, I guess, are my favorite revolvers. So I'm a little bit of a revolver snob. I really like the Smith, uh, even over the Ruger, although I like Ruger's. And so uh, it takes a lot in a revolver. I've been shooting these most of my life, and I'm kind of picky about a revolver, especially. I kind of prefer the classic look of a revolver. And of course, you get that with Smith, right? They've been around since, what, the 1850s. Um, and making the same type of revolver since the, the latter part of the 1800s, actually, the, the old M&P, the you know, police special and all those. Uh, the 38 hadn't really changed much in all these years other than size and finish and all that. Well, this looks a little different uh, than those, but, you know, it's not a lot. And you also know, if you've been around a while, I like these hammerless, or at least these concealed hammer revolvers. And uh, this, this one is it's concealed hammer and it's smooth they've done a nice job on it the lines of it you know the way the sights are on it uh, you know I, I like that uh, I compared it a little bit with my I didn't bring it out but my model 65 Smith & Wesson where I shaved off the hammer it's got a hammer well they all have a hammer they've got a fire somehow but it had an external hammer I shaved off the spur and you're talking about a similar firearm in some ways except it's a three inch barrel without a hammer to hang up, you know, and it has fixed sights like this sort of does. Although these are replaceable. That's one advantage this has over a 65 or a firearm like that. You can uh, replace the rear sight and the front sight. Uh, and I understand there people are gonna be coming out with those if they're not out already, maybe night sights or just different options for it. Uh, but it, it's cool because it's all smooth and of course it's empty. Uh, I mean, there's nothing to snag, and that's what this is for. It's a self-defense pistol that you would have. I've got it in a holster, a, a K-frame holster it fits in. Uh, it could be a pocket gun. I, I, it would, it's kind of borderline, I think. It would not be the ideal pocket gun because it's kind of heavy, 23 ounces. It's a little bit bigger revolver. It would work in a large pocket maybe with the right holster. But I see it more as a waist gun, a, uh, just like this, a uh, belt gun. But it's got enough weight to, to handle the, the warmer loads. So, and I will shoot some here. I want to go ahead and do it. Uh, 357 Magnum. Okay, now you get some, some kick. You know, <laughs> you know you're shooting something pretty hot here. If you've ever fired 357 Magnum in a, well, any revolver, but especially a small one, you know what I'm talking about. So you know what you've what you're got a hold of here. But again, as, as some experts will tell you, with a two inch barrel, you don't really gain a lot by shooting really hot magnums through it because the powder doesn't really have room enough to burn and give you the velocity you think you're going to get or you wished you could get, okay? So 
that, I mean, there are people who say you might as well just be shooting, you know, plus P or 38 specials and all that. So, and that's what I would carry in it, uh, plus P 38, some good defensive stuff. All right, let's shoot something. All right, these are going to be hot. Am I ready? Am I ready? Well, let's try the cowboy. All right. Got him in the hat. Let's try the other cowboy. <laughs> That's stiff. Let's try that blue tank. Boom. Boom. You can probably see it kicking. It, uh, it, it jumps. Thankfully, those grips really come in handy if you're going to be shooting something that hot. All right. So you can handle it uh, if you want to carry something that hot. Uh, it'll work. Prefer or uh, my preference is something like this. We've got 38 special plus P here. I'm gonna put six of those in and take a couple of shots. This is what I would probably carry in it. And uh, yeah, I got some more here. And one thing I've noticed over the couple of weeks, whenever I get it out to shoot it, uh, and I've shot it a few times here before the video today, even. Uh, you don't just immediately get clogged up or, or you know, the next round those want to go in. I've had none of that in my today, but it's uh, it just seems to be a precision instrument, okay? All right. Why don't I go ahead and try a couple on the gong, see if it's gong worthy uh, with a two inch barrel. Let's see if I'm gong worthy with a double action only two inch barrel. Maybe I can pop him once or twice. That's that sweet sound I love. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Got him a couple times. I was kind of throwing him over there. Uh, the sights seem to be on, you know. Uh, and uh, as far as accuracy, obviously, it's more accurate than than the shooter uh, standing and shooting as about any firearm is gonna be. Uh, so it seems to be plenty accurate. Let's shoot something a little lighter again. Let's shoot some of these. Uh, I, you know, it wasn't designed to shoot at 80 yards, even at a large gong. It was designed for up close and dirty, you know, things like, like that coffin right there. Uh, maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe a two liter. All right. Quick. All right. Like I have some in my back pocket. I always have ammo in my back pocket wherever I go. Actually, no joke. I did uh, went to the hardware store one day. I'd been out here shooting, and I'd left my wallet at home. I pulled, reached for my wallet, and all I had was a pocket full of ammo. <laughs> it was at uh, AutoZone, actually. They wouldn't take the ammo uh, for money. Let's see. What else needs? Oh, there's a 12-ouncer. go. I'm a little close for that guy. <laughs> I was losing the front sight in the smoke. Now that is one negative. I would need to paint the front sight. You've heard me say that lots of times, uh, but it's, uh, it's just a fact of life. On uh, my Model 65, again, check out those videos if you're not familiar if you're watching this because you like revolvers you would love that model 65 smith and wesson also it's one of my very favorite revolvers on the planet it's uh it used to be carried by the dea the blue version of it was the fbi revolver back in the 80s and all that i mean these guns have a lot of history these guns like this uh and again I, it, this reminds me of it in a lot of ways but uh i have painted the front sights what i was trying to get to there and put a little paint on it and it, it it makes a world of difference in a in a firearm like this i mean you know to have a little paint on the black site i think and while i'm speaking of that the 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 other negative maybe they'll offer it in a different barrel length i would i would be really attracted to this firearm uh, to own myself perhaps if it were this is a, an e-gunner go back to buds for the e-gunner auctions but if it had a three inch barrel on it maybe a two and a half this is a two inch 
two and a half, maybe two and three quarters. I don't know. If it was close to three inches, I would really like this. I really like it. I, I like it anyway, but uh, it would be very attractive, okay? Uh, so pretty neat because it's kind of a bull barrel, you know, like my 65. It's not as bull or maybe quite as heavy. It's close. You know, all that underlug is part of the barrel. It's, it's a nice gun, okay? Now, of course, whether revolvers interest you as a carry piece, that's another factor. You know, a lot of revolvers we bring out and shoot and uh, that, that I own, you might own. You look at them as mostly range guns, perhaps. But, uh, you know, when you get into thinking about carrying a revolver as a carry piece, then that ups the ante and uh, you get a little more picky, don't you, about it. The size, the weight, the capacity, uh, you name it. Here I am grabbing more magnums. You know, I haven't had enough uh, pain yet today. But uh, the firearm seems to handle it. Uh, if, if you're of the thinking that, well, I'm not interested in a Kimber revolver at all, uh, you might want to take a look at one uh, if you like revolvers. It's, it's pretty cool. Well, why did I do that? Why did I load up six of those things? Let's go over on that big hanging target. I think I hit it a couple, three times there. It's hard to tell sometimes with your ears in and all that. Uh, I, I mean, it's manageable. It's manageable. You could put some pretty warm stuff in there and uh, with those grips, you know, as far as a carry. If, you know, some people just swear by a 357 Magnum for their carry gun or a defensive gun and they want some hot stuff in it. Uh, again, I don't know if you get all that out of the two inches, but uh, uh, on that barrel length, but it's it's pretty cool. What did I not tell you about it before I get too carried away shooting it? It's uh, of course the shooting is the most important, and the trigger and everything. The trigger is smooth. It's it's a nice, and you notice I was I chose today just to shoot it double action. Wait a minute, did I choose that? No, I didn't have a choice, did I? Yeah, double action is the only way you fire it. Okay, so John has concluded it's actually a single action. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it has one action. <laughs> you have one choice. Yeah, you know, so it's gonna be a double action pull, uh, no matter what, and so it is kind of nice if it's smooth. It doesn't stack, really, it's, it's, a, it's a sweet one. Uh, the other thing, I think I lost it. I had something on my brain there I was gonna say about it. Um, the nice, uh, the, the trigger is nice. Um, you know, the latch is a little different. It's more like a Ruger latch. You just push on it. It, it feels like quality. It, it opens right up and, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not starting to hang up or anything. So let's shoot. I think I've got some more of those plus. Oh, yeah, this comes with it. Okay, man, you get a speed strip. It's kind of like the Bianchi uh, speed strip. This is the Santos. I didn't know they made them. And uh, the box is just plain Jane cardboard. But you get this little dude. And uh, this strip was in there. I almost didn't see it or find it. Okay, so nice little pouch. And uh, this holds six, just like the firearm. When we loaded off of that. You ever, you've seen these before? You just put a couple in, peel them off. I haven't practiced a lot, but uh, if you're going to carry a revolver with one of these, then, you know, you want to, oops, look what I did. You want to practice a little more. Generally, you're two in at a time there and figure it out if you're not as dumb as I am. One of the benefits of this, as much as anything, uh, is it's not necessarily some ultimate speed loader, but when you get ammo in it, it's it's a nice flat way to carry ammo, like an off pocket. You know, it's not like a big speed round speed loader and that sort of thing. So that's one of the big benefits of it. So what I put in there, plus P. All right. You know. I just have a hankering to try to hit uh, a pig over there. I'm going to shoot for one of those pigs up there. I would be happy if I could get one of them over. Ah! <laughs> well, I'm going home. I'm finished, John. Uh, let me try the other one. <laughs> See, that's why you go home after you hit one. 
Uh, but anyway, it, if you stand, take your time, even with that trigger, you might be surprised what you can hit, okay? So, I think there was something else. Oh, I know what it was. Uh, I was gonna tell, give you some pricing, okay? It's really cheap, it's only $159 shipped to your door. No, that's not true. It's, uh, the MSRP is like $8.99, I think, okay? So you're talking, I don't know what it'll sell for in the shops if it's out there yet, but uh, it will, it will, I forget what it was. I'm not sure if it's showing up yet on, on uh, the Bud's uh, list or not, to tell you the truth. They just let me know they had one. But it, uh, yeah, it's gonna run around 800 bucks probably, okay? So, uh, yeah, yeah, expensive gun, expensive gun. That's the bad news. The good news is it really does seem to be a, a well-made firearm, at least from my experience, limited experience with it. And uh, like I said, I've been shooting it off and on for a couple of weeks. I've not encountered any hang-ups, anything like that. So if you're a big Kimber fan, you might uh, wanna add a revolver. Notice the, uh, we've got kind of a, the recessed uh, counterboard uh, chambers there, like the old Smiths have. And it's a little different, but uh, they've done that. They've uh, spared no expense on it, that's for sure. It, uh, it just feels like it's well made. Interesting design. It's not so far off the reservation that, it, uh, that, it, that I find it unappealing. You know, like uh, the Kiapa, uh, what do they call it? I forget the name of the revolver now, but we did. And I kind of made fun of the looks of it a lot. People give me a hard time about that. But I admitted in the video that it was uh, a good shooter and you know, shot great. Uh, so. Uh, so, but on this one, it is a little bit more like your traditional revolver. It's easier for me to like it, even though it's different. It comes from a company that has, I guess, no history at all making revolvers. So, that's kind of my take on it. Uh, I wish it had a little bit longer barrel, but uh, yeah, the grips feel great. Uh, the trigger, the concealed hammer, I love, and it's got a nice trigger pull. It holds six rounds. So if you like little revolvers, there's not a lot to hate about it, okay? I, I can't make up much to bash it. Uh, I've not uncovered anything that really bothers me or anything that doesn't work right or seems awkward or rough. Uh, it seems smooth and it's fired everything I've shot it. The same experience I've had today is what I've been having the last couple of weeks. And uh, even when you clean it, when you run the, a ramrod through each chamber, you know, with some revolvers, because you've got the exact same patch, you know, the same lube on or whatever, and you run through all the chambers. And if you ever notice one chamber seems a little bit tighter than the others, just a tad. I haven't even noticed any of that with this one. It just, it just all seemed, you know, consistent. So we haven't done a lot of Kimber, so I'm gonna be, <laughs> be honest, give them a good chance on it. It, it just uh, feels like a good gun. Uh, it's really pricey. A lot of people will have no interest in it, I'm sure, because of the price. But if that doesn't scare you away and you're kind of in the market for a uh, small revolver like this that holds six rounds with a concealed hammer, I, I would definitely give it a look if you can find one. Uh, again, I don't know how, how available it is at this point, but it, it will become available like everything does. You know, for a while you cannot find them. They can't keep up the production to meet the demand, uh, but then they catch up eventually. So cool little gun. But then again, I'm kind of a revolver guy at heart, uh, and I like it. Life is good. Since I'm still here, let me go ahead and thank SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute, uh, for their support of the channel. If you're not familiar with them, they uh, do distance learning. They're fully accredited. You can get a, a certification in gunsmithing there. You can even get an associate degree in firearms technology, and you can go on to do a lot of different things with that, you know, if you're interested. So, uh, you know, there's hands-on training and everything. So check the link in the description, sdi.edu, and, uh, you know, check it out. I do a lot of work with veterans, so it might be uh, of, of some interest to you. So check that out. And also keep in mind while I've got you, while I'm still here, that we are on Full 30 now. All our videos are over on Full30.com and there's a link uh, in the video descriptions to that as well. So, you know, watch us wherever you like to. YouTube, Full 30, better yet, both. <laughs> and, uh, and keep in mind that uh, we have the Hickok 45 and Sun channel. Uh, John does a lot of things over there. I do some things over there, some Hickok history, different things. Uh, we've got the Hickok 45 uh, Facebook page. We do a lot on that. There's 400,000 uh, people following that. I hope you're one of them. 
uh, the Hickok 45 and Son Facebook page. Uh, so got a lot going on there. Got the gun culture radio uh, show that John does. Now I'm on that show sometimes uh, over on Hickok 45 and Son. So just wanted to make you aware of everything that's going on in case you might not be familiar with it. Okay. And you'd better start getting familiar with it because if you don't, I'm going to come to your house and have a chat with you. You don't want that to happen. And if I do, you'd better have good donuts and good coffee waiting for me, okay?